Now, what I've done here, I transferred the solid that we just collected after squeezing it through the filter paper, place it in an Erlmeyer flask with the stir bar. I've added some 95% ethanol. I've turned the hot plate on. That's going to be our heating source. And this really starts out um, as a fraction, as a regular recrystallization, uh, a little bit different in that we're, we're taking something that's crude, more crude than we would expect it to be, and cause one thing to crystallize, but not the other isomer. So what we've done is to put this on the hot plate. We're gonna let that heat to boil. How much ethanol do we use? I can't tell you. Um, it depends on how much product I formed. I don't quite know how much product I formed. Even if I did a weight, it's still pretty wet. So I can't tell you you're gonna use 10 mils or 15 mils, you just have to, it's trial and error. So I added some ethanol and what we're gonna do is very similar to what we did at the, the first recrystallization we've done. I'm gonna heat that up. I'm not gonna add any more ethanol until everything dissolves. If not, if not all that dissolves, I'm gonna continue to add just enough ethanol until everything dissolves. Then I'll do that test tube test that we use for recrystallization if it seems like it's time to set it off the hot plate, then I will. So we've got two main isomers we're trying to separate. The ortho isomer and the para isomer. The para isomer has very little solubility in ethanol. Uh, it's, it's more soluble hot than it would be cold. So what happens is that the para isomer, since it does have the lowest solubility in the ethanol, it will precipitate or crystallize first. So we're hoping that the first crop, and we're gonna to try to collect three crops is, uh, in terms of the, the different products. So the first crop that we collect, hopefully will be mostly the para isomer. Once we collect the first crop, we'll take the filtrate from that, boil that down, and then collect the second crop. Second crop, most likely, will be more of the para isomer than anything else. The ortho isomer is extremely soluble in ethanol, and it usually has a lower melting point uh, than the para isomer. So I'm gonna try to boil down the filtrate from the second crop, and we'll see if we can get a precipitate. I kinda doubt it. We may just have to take that liquid, and in that liquid should be mainly our ortho isomer. You can tell that more of the, the solid has dissolved. There's still a little bit left with that heat to the bowl. Looks like mostly everything has dissolved. So what I want to do now is the test tube test for recrystallization that I like to use. So I'm going to pull some of this up. Do you see how it automatically crystallized? That's too fast. So what I want to do now, I'm going to add more ethanol because I don't want it to fall completely out of solution as soon as I take it off the hot plate. So this is where it's just kind of trial and error. I don't really know how much I'm gonna use uh, until the test tube test tells me. And I like to rinse down the sides of the Erlenmeyer flask just in case any material crept up the sides. let that reach the bowl again and then I'm going to do the test tube test and see if it's better. I just don't want it crystallizing immediately inside that pop head. See how it crystallized as soon as it uh, or as soon as I put it into the uh, test tube. That's still telling me it's a little bit, uh, I want a little bit more time difference before that happens. It didn't crystallize in the pipette, so it's better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more ethanol. I'm gonna add some to that test tube to see if I can get some of that back in. most of that back in here, so that's good. So 
better. It's not all one solid clump. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of the ethanol to that. And then I think we'll be ready to take that off. I like to change the pipettes, especially when I start, uh, certainly when you're adding the ethanol to it. And I think based on the previous test, I think I'm going to take this off. I'm going to get a wire gauze to uh, set that on top of, and then we'll let it sit and crystallize. And then uh, you don't want the level of the solvent to get below what it is. So uh, either a clean stopper, you don't want to take a stopper that's not clean, or you can use paper towel just to stopper it while it's chill, uh, cooling down. Once that cools to room temperature, or even beforehand, we should start seeing some crystals form. Um, I probably may put that in an ice bath, just to, not now, but uh, after it's cooled to room temperature, uh, just to make sure I can get more crystals. It's not so important today to, I'm gonna be looking also for purity, but I'm trying to get as much of the isomers back again. And when I get these isomers back separated, they're still not going to be 100% pure. So after you, what, if you go through what we're doing today for the fractional crystallization, you would probably want to take each crop you got and recrystallize that again, or you perhaps may want to do some column chromatography if that would work as well. So we're going to let that sit and come back and check it periodically. Um, here is the uh, recrystallized material. Uh, remember we took what we collected in the Buchner funnel, we put in a flask containing a stir bar and ethanol. He did that to the ball and when crystallization began by the test tube test, we took it off, removed the stir bar, put it in an ice bath uh, after a certain period of time. I haven't seen any more crystals. I just want to kind of bring this to your attention. Do you see the layer that's on top? Uh, if we go much lower than that, you always want to have liquid above the solid that, that's crystallizing. So if it's not, then before you do the next filtration, I probably would add a little bit just so that you have some liquid that you're going to actually be filtering. So I'm going to, um, actually I think what I'm going to do first is kind of break this up a little bit because it's fairly there's more liquids there there we go just so it's easier to filter i'm gonna i'm using ethanol so i'm gonna squirt a little bit of ethanol on the filter paper turn on my faucet And then give this a swirl. I have some chilled ethanol. I don't want to go crazy with it like I did with the water before because we were really trying to get rid of all the acid. But maybe 10 or 15 mils is probably all I really want to wash that. I'm just going to use it actually and kind of do double duty here rinse whatever I have left, and then I'm going to wash that on top. And these are some, uh, really a very white crystalline solid there that we've collected. So uh, I'm going to remove this solid, put it on some filter paper, squeeze it to see if I can get as much of the solid dry, as much of the water off as possible. And then I'm going to squeeze that again to see if there's any, really shouldn't be much of any moisture there, but certainly we want to get as much of the ethanol off because we want to take a melting point and a weight. I'm not seeing much on the filter paper. I think I'm going to let this just sit here to air dry a little bit. While this is air drying, 
I'm just kind of crunching that up a little bit, breaking it apart. Um, I'm gonna let that air dry, and then I'm gonna take this fill tray, because what we just collected was the first crop. So now, and I, let me mention this also, um, I use the same Eutner funnel to filter the crude product when we finish the nitration reaction. I took the contents of that, neutralized that so I can pour it in the waste. It's crucial that the flask is clean when you collect the first crop, when you collect the second, so on and so, so forth. So I did clean this before we used it because now what we're going to do is take this material put this in another Erlenmeyer flask, excuse me, and then boil that down until we get another crop. So I'm gonna remove the... Buechner funnel, and then I'm going to... take this back to the fume hood, and then we'll start boiling this material down as well. 